بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹو جائی ویڈا نیکس ٹاپک آف دی کانٹینیوس ٹائم ایل ٹی آئی سسٹمز اوکی سو As you know, we are done with the, the discrete time LTI systems and we've seen the basic methodology, what we did. What we did was, we, the first and the prime most thing is that we represent any general signal in terms of our basic signals. Fine, that was the main strategy. Over here again, the same thing we do is what? We will represent. The first thing that we learn is to represent any general signal, any general or any given signal in terms of a basic signal. Well, I'm recording a video after a very, very long time, more than a month, okay? So, pardon the writing. I'm sorry for it, okay? I'll get back in form with, with, with some, with a number of videos, right? You know, my laptop was stolen and I've lost all my videos. Uh, the discrete time convolution that I already had recorded, but I had not copied to laptop. It was available in the memory card. So I have uploaded that. So from today, after a very long break of about more than a month, today I believe it's 12th November that I'm recording this video. The last time I recorded a video was, was in September, the end of September. So anyway, no problem. The basic idea is to represent any general signal in terms of a basic signal. And what is the basic signal that we have chosen, that the book has chosen for this purpose is the unit impulse signal which means that we would try to represent any given signal in terms of a unit impulse signal. So let's say we have a signal. Let's say, let's say we have, we have a signal x of t, which is varying something like this with respect to t. Fine. Now, how is the impulse? So, you know, if I, if I draw it over here, so we show it just by an arrow at t equal to 0 and represent it with a delta of t. But we also know that this is an idealized impulse which has been derived from another signal basically which is like this. This is if your time axis. So this signal is like this 0 to delta and with a height 1 over delta. So this is delta delta of t. Fine. The area of the impulse signal has to be 1. The area of this signal is also 1. So if you apply a limit, if you apply a limit delta approaching to 0, you get this signal. Is that fine? That we already have seen. Now, for uh, some people are confused in delta, so so let me tell you that this is also delta, and this is also delta. Fine. These both are deltas. Delta. All right. So coming to the signal to represent it in terms of a delta. So if I, you know, now I draw it like this, if I have this sort of an approximation to it. This is your approximation to it. So if I name this a delta, let, let I take a bigger interval. If I take, if I name this a delta, now this is 2 delta. If this is negative of delta, fine, taking some big interval. So, so this would be the value, fine. Then, then you have it like this. 
then like this then like this fine you have it over here like this over here like this so what basically we did is we approximated the signal using the delta function fine this approximation this is known as the staircase approximation staircase approximation fine we call this a staircase approximation have a look let me take one of this part so if i have it from 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 zero to delta let's say so if this is your signal from zero to delta this is your time x is right now if i need the value of x of zero <coughs> if i need the value at <coughs> sorry if i need the value at t equal to zero so what i need to do is i need x of zero so how did we did in the discrete time we multiplied this with an impulse located at t equal to that particular point where we need the value that is at t equal to zero but have a look in this case what do you get is if you multiply delta of zero with it so delta of zero is basically one over delta fine so you are multiplying one over delta with the value that is existing at x equal to zero t equal to zero so you have to multiply another delta with it you have to multiply another delta with it to get what to get your x of zero i hope this point is clear why why did i multiply this because this delta delta of t this basically is equal to 1 over delta when t is between 0 and delta and it's zero otherwise so have a look if i multiply well basically this is this delta delta if i multiply this function with any number any number x of 0 is any number i multiply this value if this is in this range so this would be a 1 over delta would be multiplied with any number so this would give me 1 over delta multiplied with that number but i do not need 1 over delta i need that number so i multiply another delta with it to get my x of 0 clear let's say let's say another one let's say from from delta to 2 delta if this is from delta to 2 delta this is your time axis what do you have now i need x of delta if you need x of delta you multiply x of delta with an impulse located at t equal to delta so so what would i do is i would have a t minus delta because now i have shifted toward the right so i would have a t minus delta now this would give me what this would give me x of delta multiplied with 1 over delta so i have to multiply another delta with it to get my x of delta fine similarly if i take one on the negative side so if i have it from let's say it's another staircase if i have from negative delta to zero and i need the value at negative delta so what do i have to do is i have to multiply x of negative delta you know the whole function would basically be multiplied but the answer is this that x of negative delta if multiplied with delta of now t plus delta and you also have to multiply another delta with it so you get a x of minus delta fine well basically i'm 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 showing it over here that x of delta but this would be your whole signal this would be your whole signal x of t with we if you want the value at any particular point you multiply an impulse at that point if i if i want it at t naught so i have it at t minus t naught 
this gives me this value but this would multiply it with a 1 over delta as well so I have another delta this is how you do it you give you have an x of t naught in this way this is the general method fine what's next So, <clears throat> the staircase approximation that I talked about, so I had an approximation of my signal something like this. Well, uh, not like this, but let us say this is the approximation, fine. See, I represent my approximation with an x cap of t, x cap of t. So, have a look at this now. You have an x of 0, you have a delta of 0. You have an x of delta, you have a t minus delta. You have a minus delta, you have a plus t plus delta. So, what can I write is x of k delta and now you multiply it with what? You multiply it with a delta delta. And where would it be located? It would be located at a t minus k delta. t minus k delta, right? Have a look, you can see it. And then finally, it is multiplied with a delta. Fine. And what do you do? You sum it. You sum it from k running from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is how I have approximated my signal in terms of a unit impulse signal. Now to make it more accurate, what do I have to do? This is not accurate. Have a look at this approximation. Have a look at my original black signal. So this is not accurate. How do I approximate it till a good extent? How do I make it more accurate? So how to make it more accurate so what do you think should I do if I make these intervals small won't my approximation be better it will be so what do I need to do I need to make the delta small the more the delta is small the more my approximation is better so I mean to do is I apply limit to delta and what is that limit the limit is delta would approach to 0 so if I do this if I do this my x of t would my x cap of t would now become x of t this is that limit delta approaching to 0 and you have summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of k delta 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 of t minus k delta and you have delta fine now now you know mathematics better than me again if the uh, delta delta is applied the limit is applied to delta so what would happen now that my the first and the foremost thing that you know is that delta delta would change to a simple delta fine the next thing you know is that summation would change to integration if the limit is applied overall on the axis the next that would happen is this k delta now this delta was the limit of integration and you have the k k times so this was some discrete time values but if you have it very very small very very small so now it would be approximately continuous and we would have another variable for this k delta 
would change to another variable tau and the delta which was the discrete uh, points now we are moving towards a continuous quantity so uh, that was now it would be very very small interval then it would be a small time so I would mention it as a d tau so now the signal the signal would be what x of t x of t is integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of tau delta of t minus tau and d tau and this is how you represent any general signal in terms of a unit impulse signal. This is how you represent any general signal in terms of a unit impulse signal. Now, uh, if you have any problem, so the problem would be most probably in the limits. Uh, okay. Well, uh, this thing you know better than me from your mathematics. I'm very weak in that. I have applied a limit. The delta is approaching to zero. So the first and the foremost thing that we know from this that the delta delta would change to simple delta impulse function. That is very simple. Another simple is that summation would change to integration. That is also we know. The next thing is k delta. So k delta was the shifted points. K delta was the shifted points. So that were discrete times. Now if delta is approaching to zero, now we would have a continuous time range. So in the continuous time range, we often use the notation that is tau. So I've used the notation tau. And again, delta was what? That was the discrete intervals of time. Now to represent the small continuous time intervals, I have used d tau. And this is the mathematical formula. You say the sampling property of how uh, you know you represent any any signal x of t in terms of this signal impulse. So, I believe that's all about this video. See you in the next video very soon, inshallah. Uh, till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you as well. Goodbye.